Hi guys. Well, it is still trying to hang on to being a fine spring day, clinging by its fingernails here on. It is good lord. How long has it been since I have done a rant? It is now Tuesday, April twenty fifth. 2023 and this is the last day of our little uh, absence from bugs in a jar farm where it is snowing today uh, there there is like <clears throat> one little cloud in the state of new york snowing today right directly over bugs in a jar farm but i will be back tomorrow to new york baby so for the final rant from the road here on did I say it was Tuesday April 25th 2023 I am at my good buddy Roy's house here in Pennsylvania and uh, he has a friend who I've mentioned here before and maybe we can uh, get Roy to hook me up with this guy on medium.com calling himself Indica. I think I have had two rants. I think this is the third uh, rant I've heard from this fellow Indica. His real name, he's from, he's from Sri Lanka. There's no way I can pronounce this guy's name. So he calls himself Indica. And unfortunately, Indica is a huge fan of the F-bomb. Uh, since I try not to use the F-bomb, I'm going to trade the F-word for the D-word or the S-word. But anyway, what is on your mind today, Indica? Hopefully this battery will not conk out. <clears throat> How mathematically we are <clears throat> doomed, shall we say, how mathematically we're doomed. Exponential growth on a finite planet does not end well whatever form it takes. Uh, I have spoken about the physics and finances of how we are doomed. Now let's talk about the math that is the reason for both, you know, of the physics and the finances. It's the math behind it all, and of course what uh, he's going to be talking about is the concept of exponential growth, uh, the, about infinite growth on a finite planet. Now he starts out not with the yeast in a Petri dish or the uh, or the water lilies on the pond, what he does is goes through the uh, old story about the rice on the chessboard. Uh, the chessboard problem. I'm sure we've all heard of, of that. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, I'm not going to repeat all that. So the bottom line is uh, we ignore this peril, this parable at our peril, the parable of, the, you know, you put one grain of rice on the first and then two on the second, four on the third. By the time you get to the 64th square, the entire planet is buried under four feet of rice. Okay, take it away and explain why mathematically we're doomed. Due to the chessboard problem, <clears throat> exponential growth is absurd, and we have based our entire civilization on this absurdity. Modern society, unlike the ancients, requires exponential growth for social stability. It is a belief we all generally share, and it is the belief that is killing us. Climate change and resource collapse are just symptoms of believing an impossible thing and following it into absurdity. You cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. It is not physically, financially, 
or mathematically possible, and you can do the math yourself. <clears throat> We're used to thinking of modest growth rates like 2 to 3 percent and thinking that they're harmless. Just get a better iPhone in a few years, whatever. But any steady growth rate is exponential. <clears throat> As a rule of thumb, you can divide the growth rate into 70 to get the doubling time. So, 2% growth every year, which doesn't sound like anything. So, 2% growth every year means doubling every 35 years, <clears throat> which is the, an example of an exponential. In geological times, 35 years might as well be 35 millimeters, the rough size of a chess square. Thus, we have the chessboard problem on a planetary scale. If you keep doubling anything, be it fossil fuels or lithium use or mascara sales, you inevitably, inexorably run out of worlds. The type of growth is actually immaterial in the long run you know, the over 35 year run. The type of growth is actually immaterial in the long run. It's just math. Ask bacteria who have run into the same problem before when they caused runaway climate change last time, you know, and killed about 95% of life on the planet in so doing. <clears throat> I like the term overflowing. This is a new term for the chronicle of the collapse. Overflowing is just how exponential growth works, Ray Cancer, and our civilization requires exponential growth or it freaks out. Anything less you know, then exponential growth is a recession requiring massive human sacrifice and economic priests bailing out their masters with furious monetary incantations. You know, can you say 2008? Uh, anything to keep the ball rolling but no one questions where the ball is going, where it must go to. All of these reverent priests, you know, the economist he's talking about, ignore the gravity of the situation, focusing on their imaginary models of a human-centered universe. Beneath all the obfuscating math of not a science economics, these latter-day priests cannot even prove their core assumptions because their core assumptions are false. You simply cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. You run out of chessboard and indeed we have already run out. We have already used up 1.7 Earth's worth, Earth's worth of resources, and we're just a few more doublings away from over overshoot. There you go, over overshoot. I guess can you say overflow? The modern lie, the modern lie is that we can simply change energy sources and keep growing, but math gives a damn about the type of energy. Whatever it is, whatever it is, it cannot keep growing exponentially. And energy and emissions is only one part of the problem. Solving climate change would be like lowering a fever while ignoring the fact 
that you have cancer, CO2 emissions are just one symptom of our reckless overshoot. Look into the warming oceans or the receding forest or all of our dead relatives to see the damage we do with the energy we have. That is, it is not just the emissions coming out of the back of this civilization. It is the diggers. It is the diggers and trawlers and incinerators on the front end. Thank you for spelling this out, Indica, and articulating uh, what I've been trying to say for years. It does not matter. Okay, guys, read Indica's lips. It's kind of hard to see Indica's lips because he's behind a mask, but we won't talk about that. Read Indica's lips. It does not matter if we use clean solar and wind and never touch a drop of oil again. First, we would just use the energy for destroying other parts of the earth, mining lithium and paving roads and otherwise screwing things up. And second, the second law of thermodynamics would catch up. Any work generates heat. At our, at our scale, we don't notice, but scale up exponentially, and we would boil the oceans at just a few centuries of 2.3% growth, regardless of the energy source. It sounds stupid, but that's just what exponentials are. They are absurd. When I mention this boiling the oceans in 400 years, people say it's absurd, but you can do the math yourself. This is high school level stuff and it shows what happens when you build an entire economic system around a bad assumption. We all take growth for granted, but never question what it means beyond our 401ks, but just stretch it out to 400 years and the planet turns into Venus. Yes, it is absurd and our entire civilization is based on this absurdity. As I've said in earlier pieces, we require more and more resource use every year and everybody's investments and pensions are gambled 20 to 1 on this extraction going on forever. But A, it can't, and B, if it somehow did, we would boil the oceans. And again, endless growth is the mainstream position. This is economic orthodoxy and despite all the numbers and hand-waving, it is not math. You don't need a PhD to understand the chessboard problem. Indeed, you need a PhD to not understand it, meaning a PhD in economics. So you have to get a PhD in economics to not understand something as simple as the chessboard problem. The problem is that very few of us paid attention in math or physics class and we take it for granted that serious economists know what they're doing, but they don't. Their human-centric view of the world is as false as the Earth-centric model of the universe was. The fact is that the geocentric view of the world was actually pretty good at making predictions and is still used in planetariums, but it is still wrong. And modern economics is just wrong. Its, basics, its basic assumptions do not 
stand up to basic math. Yet, in the moment, it seems crazy to even acknowledge this. We are the bacteria in the penultimate jar, and the jar appears half empty to us. Plenty of room and time to spare, but that is not how exponentials work. While you can understand the math of it in a few pages, the human mind simply cannot, under cannot understand how fast shit gets out of control. As Murphy says, uh, in, in, uh, he had not, uh, anyway, I'm not sure. I thought this was the Murphy of Murphy's Law, but this really is somebody named Murphy that he's quoting, who I'm a little unclear who he's quoting. Uh, as Murphy says, quote, we saw in this chapter that unabated growth leads to absurd results. First, we calibrated our intuition in the, contact, in the context of bacteria in jars. The key point is that the jar is half full, one doubling before it is full. While this seems obvious, it delays the drama to the very end, acting fast to impose hard limits and catch the inhabitants by surprise. The condition that persisted for many generations, thus taken for granted, suddenly change completely, close quote. Maybe he introduced this Murphy at the, uh, anyway, uh, I'm not sure where this Murphy guy but was introduced, uh, but moving back to Indica, I think we're going to come back to Murphy in a minute. Back to indigo. So in this sense, climate change is a distraction. Thank you uh, for calling climate change what it has become. In this sense, you know, set against the larger picture, climate change is a distraction. We are nearing the inflection point where doubling overflows the jar. Indeed, we're already past the point of no return, and we are debating what to fill the jar with. Lithium and copper instead of oil and gas. It is absurd. This distracting debate, a hallmark of democracy, allows opinion, and this is right here in the Doomosphere, allows opinion to split into two camps. Oil growth and green growth, both of which support the ruling hierarchy of more growth. It's like arguing over getting cancer in the colon or the lungs. Exponential growth anywhere is a cancer. We are missing this point at our literal peril. Thank you very much. This is Indica's way of saying, you know, what I'm always talking about, that it is the frying pan and the fire. It's no longer frying pan or the fire. It's, it's all uh, burning the planet up. We are now going into the frying pan and the fire with this false distraction debate. It makes no difference. Fossil fuels, clean green energy, frying pan and the fire. We are missing this point at our literal peril. Our growth, I don't care what color your growth is, our growth is killing bees, 
destroying forest and stripping the seas. Hell, it doesn't even make us happy. If we find, if we find, thank you very much, if we find magically free and green energy, we'll just use it to, and I'm going to use the F word, to fuck the fish and birds and the trees even worse. Uh, so finally, I have someone joining me and Andy the gardener and understanding that the worst possible thing that could happen to this planet, worse than fossil fuels, worse than uh, all of this bright green lie energy, if there really was truly such a thing as unlimited, magically free and green, green energy, we would just use it to fuck the fish and the birds and the trees even worse and make things even worse for ourselves. That is how cancer works. You can chase it out of one place, but it spreads everywhere else. We proudly talk about our cancerous, cancerous growth like we're getting swole, but in fact, we're just about to explode, spraying sinews and testosterone everywhere. This is not a value judgment or an opinion. It's just math. It's just exponentials. Double anything long enough and it gets out of control slowly, then all at once. Double something innocuous like a grain of rice and it ruins a kingdom. Double something toxic like oil, and you poison the skies. Double lithium, and you end up in the same place. Double the ambitions of any species, and it will overflow its petri dish, and we are just another species. Human ambitions have already overflowed the planet. It doesn't matter if we get to Mars. In fact, it is entirely possible that we already did this to Venus in the long forgotten past. As Murphy says, quote, in the end, physics puts a timeline on expectations with respect to growth in energy on Earth, close quote. Okay, so his blog, and he links you over to this fellow Murphy's blog, his blog is called Do the Math, and the textbook lays out fascinating homework and exponential growth. Unfortunately for you and me, this homework was due sometime in the 1970s. You can do the homework for your own edification, but when it comes to understanding exponential growth, we have already failed. <laughs> there you go. So thank you for the lesson in uh, understanding something that we have already failed. Uh, and, 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 and this is why we are doomed or effed, as uh, Indica would say, but uh, we're going to wrap up this because uh, I'm excited to learn. I did not realize I was in the hometown of the old Bethlehem Steel Factory. Uh, good God. Uh, so we are literally going to go chronicle the collapse of the Bethlehem Steel Factory coming up, I highly suggest you get out there and, and enjoy your steel factories and your lithium mines and all the rest of it while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, little dog, did my battery survive? I don't believe it.